Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. This is the Green Festival edition of Green is Good here in beautiful Washington, D.C. And we're so excited to have with us today entrepreneur Ryan Schuler. He is the co-founder and people enthusiast of Java Zen. And you can find him at Java Zen, drinkjavazen.com. Ryan, welcome to Green is Good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really oh appreciate it. Oh my gosh. It. Yeah, this is great, and your product is is just wonderful. And can you, before we get talking, talk a little bit about your journey leading up to co-founding Java Zen? Like, what got you excited to be an entrepreneur, an ecopreneur? So I guess it really all started uh, growing up. My my dad, he actually started his own business, a uh, wholesale car company. So when people ask me what I wanted to do when I grew up, sixth, seventh grade, I said I don't know, but I want to make something and sell it. I want to share it. Because that's what we're doing. We're actually sharing. We're not really selling. Right, right, right. Good so, point. and then that kind of spiraled into me meeting my roommate and co-founder Eric Goldman, um, and he is—he was studying environmental science and policy, um, and that kind of spiraled me into thinking, you know, how we could make a difference. And where did you guys meet? Um, in the, at an entrepreneurship program at the University of Maryland. Um, oh, great. All three of uh, all three of us. It's. Um, me, uh, Eric Goldman, and Aaron Wallach. You guys are so well represented here. Yeah. We had more millennials on today's show from yeah. University of Maryland just totally making a difference, but making a cool product or service that people really are digging right now. And you know, it's actually really cool because University of Maryland is a hub for entrepreneurship. So we actually have access to a lot of resources that helped us get to where we are today so quickly. I mean, we started this business about a year ago, and here we have a booth at the Green Festival. We're going to four or five trade shows this year, and we're uh, starting to share some good stuff with awesome people. I love it. So talk a little bit about the founding of Java Zen, and for people who want to find your great product uh, and, and learn more about it, they could go to www.drinkjavazen.com. Yeah. When did you found it? and? Uh, how has it been in the in the year journey the since interim. you found it? Yeah. So yeah, let me just give you our journey. So yeah. uh, we uh, we officially pretty much started last March. Okay. Um, so I graduated from the University of Maryland last May. So I started this while I was in school. You know, I was like skipping class because like I found something that I wanted to do. So I love uh, it. The, the the three of us started. Um, it, it started out with stock bags, putting stickers on them. I remember I used to have sheets of stickers and putting them on every single bag of Java Zen, and we make it in the commercial kitchen at the university. So they helped us. You know, use use a commercial space to um, you know be completely you know yeah legitimate. How cool! So then it transferred. We got our we did a design contest online. Got our original packaging. We kind of just been tweaking it since then. Um, since since then, uh, we now are manufactured in a co we have a co packer in Rockville. Our beans are roasted, um, packed by hand, and now we're distributing to about 50 stores. Unbelievable! And you could also buy it online. Yeah, so we have an e-commerce site on our website. We're also on Amazon Prime, which is awesome. You can get it anywhere in two days. Oh my gosh, this is great. Yeah. Why don't we talk a little bit about your the, these three great blends you Absolutely. have right here. How'd you yeah. come up with these blends, and why come up with these blends to start with? All right, cool. So I guess we're going to start with our original blend. Uh, this is Java Zen Original. This is what made us continue with the company. You know, Because originally, we had something. And people taste it, and they're like, wow. This is amazing. You know, after tweaking it and tweaking, and tweaking, it, when people told me like I would buy this in stores, we're like, all right, we're gonna have a company. So we turned out all of our job offers, and we're like, we're gonna share this with everyone we can, and we're gonna make this our life's mission. Our mission is to inspire health in the coffee industry. Wow. So this was your first one. Yeah. So this is a blend of coffee, matcha green tea, raw cacao nibs, cinnamon, and vanilla. Wow. Yeah. And I actually have a little bit right here. So why don't we try our samples? Cheers. Cheers. Drink up, feel good. Yeah, drink up, feel good. That is delicious. I know. I could taste the chocolate in it. Mm -hmm. So it, it always starts, also this is a cold brew. So oh. we made this um, overnight for 16 hours, just kind of steeping it in water and then filtering it. Oh it's, my gosh. It's amazing. Also, it's really cool to do at uh, festivals like this because you can make a ton of it and then share it with more people. How does it taste hot? So um, cold, more of the coffee and the cacao comes out because it's like a slower process. Right. And hot, you get a little bit more of the matcha and the cinnamon, which is really cool. Really cool. T then what was your next product out of these three? Yeah, so what's really cool is our other two products were created directly from customer feedback from in-store demos. So we uh, were sold in a local uh, grocery store in the area, Mom's Organic Market. They're actually sponsoring the festival. They're, wow. They were the, one of the first um, retailers to pick us up and believe in us. Now we're in all their locations. and. Like I was saying, in-store demos. So like on a Saturday or Sunday, we go and, mainly me and my buddies, we set up a table and uh, we go and just hand out samples and sell product. And based directly off what people are saying, they're either like, oh, I can't do caffeine. So we made our decaf uh, relax blend. 
with goji berries, honey bush, rooibos, leucuma, and vanilla. Something sweet. Just decaf mm. can be fun. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. And then on the opposite end, there were people who really wanted more energy. They're like, okay, I need something that's more coffee-like. So we put it, made it, used a dark roast, mixed it with yerba mate, Amazonian tea. It's a high caffeine tea, very high in antioxidants as well. And um, let me add in acai berry, and it just provides like a nice bold flavor. So we kind of have something for everyone. Personally, I normally drink this one in the morning when I have something important. Then right. I kind of transition into original, and then I end my day on decaf, uh, relax blend. What a day! I mean, you have something for everyone in these yeah. blends. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, all the coffees out there. I mean, <laughs> they're all just kind of differently roasted, but we actually have something you know for a specific purpose. These are all differently blended. Yeah, they're, they are different blends. Now, what you've done also is you've taken a couple of trend lines, major trends. Yeah. Coffee, which now coffee has scientifically been proven to be good for you, but you've mixed it with superfoods. Yeah. Can you explain what a superfood is and how you've chosen each of these superfoods to be mixed with your coffees? Yeah, for sure. So um, superfoods are just particular foods that are nutrient dense comparative to their weight. So for example, like cacao, it's uh, it's really good for you. I mean, we actually can't like talk about like the, the actual benefits of it in our packaging due to like um, regulations, but right. it makes me feel amazing. And all of them are kind of chosen based off of uh, originally trial and error, but also research about the individual ingredients. So for example, when I drink our original, it's because there's been research done on matcha and how it doesn't give you that jittery and you know crash feeling. Right. So by you know, kind of combining that with the coffee, it makes me feel like I have a more complete balanced energy. Gotcha. And then you know moving to the yerba mate in the uh, the high energy blend, that those are both you know high caffeine substances, um, like a, like a dark roast and uh, the yerba mate. So those pair well together. And uh, the decaf, you know, we all use like like uh, red red berries, and it gives it like a nice red hue. So we use similar color ingredients as well as just cool superfoods. Ryan, when anyone starts a business, typically it takes some capital besides real yeah. guts, real energy, <laughs> and obviously you have guts, energy, and also a great idea. Where did you and your partners find your capital, your seed capital? Yeah, so um, it's been from a few different sources. So back to the University of Maryland again, they actually, we, we competed for two $5,000 grants, and so we've received $10,000 from the University of Maryland through the Citroen uh, Seed Pact Impact Fund. Unbelievable. Yeah, so, really I mean, cool. Who knew, I mean, until I, I, I came and until we covered today's Green Festival, yeah. we have met more great young millennial entrepreneurs coming out of University of Maryland. You have one of the great entrepreneurial schools in America right now, We seems do. Like. Um, also, uh, are you familiar with uh, South by Southwest? Yeah. So it, we actually just won um, the recess uh, pitch at Maryland. It's a music and ideas festival. We were brought out to, I, came, I was in LA last week uh, with my co-founder Aaron, and we, went, we won and we were presenting. We made it to the final four in the whole nation for the recess uh, pitch festival. Wow, so are yeah. you going to be at South by Southwest? No, or? I was just using that as a similarity because yes, most yes. people aren't familiar with uh, the recess competition Right, yet. good for you. What yeah. a great thing. So uh, back to the University of Maryland again. They, just, they provided us with these amazing uh, you know, tools. tools. It's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, we are now active alumni, but uh, our, my co-founder Eric, he just graduated about two weeks ago. He's currently in Europe having some fun out there. Hey, Eric. <laughs> so talk about the ingredients. Now, you've chosen the ingredients. You did the mixing. How do you source the ingredients now to maintain yeah. the integrity of your great product? So for sure, all of our um, we have 100% organic ingredients across everything that we do. Um, we just got our USDA organic certification because of our co-packer. Great. So what's really cool about specifically our coffee, uh, we actually went down, our, our co-packer brought us down to Honduras and Nicaragua this February. We get to shake hands with our farmer. I actually have WhatsApp. Come on. I, I got to show you this. Got to uh, show. Show, me, show it to you me. Know what? I left my phone over there, but I actually okay. WhatsApp my farmer. And uh, my Spanish isn't that great, but we just send pictures to each other. A really, a really funny part. Um, we were down there. His name's Pedro Pedro Romero. Okay. And uh, he's one of uh, one of the co-ops in the Capucas region of uh, Honduras. And when we were down there, our videographer. You ever uh, seen like a flagpole? I mean, people kind of do the flagpole thing, and they kind of yeah. hold it. And uh, he was doing it, and Pedro was trying to do it. It was really funny. Two weeks later, he practiced. He sends me a picture of him doing that. So it's just like we had this intimate relationship with not everyone, but. But we, uh, I mean, to, uh, being like a people enthusiast, a people person, we, we try to make all our relationships real. Did you um, video the trip and stuff of that nature? Yeah, we have a ton of footage. We're waiting to put out like a documentary style. Yeah. Uh, or maybe release some clips on our social media. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could give you some pictures yeah, for the show. I would love some pictures of it for the show when, yeah, when this airs. Absolutely. It would be really wonderful. So you've actually met 
your farmer? Some of them. Some it, of them. Because uh, the way that farming works um, from the places that we get it from, one farmer doesn't have enough volume, enough, enough capacity to sell their stuff directly. So um, one, one of the co-ops that we get our uh, stuff from. Interesting. It's actually a collection of eight, over 800 farmers. Yeah, it's, um, I got to visit the gold standard co-op of organic coffee farming in the Western Hemisphere. In my opinion, it was amazing. These people have, have, have a life outside of what they do. They have passion. I mean, for example, when I was there, they were digging, um, they were digging lakes for, uh, or, like, uh, to, for farming salmon. And they're like growing food just to eat, not to sell. And like, that's a life, giving people the opportunity and the, and the desire to do things outside of the work, have their work fuel their passions. And that's what Javazin does. We want to fuel your passion. That is, so the other products that you put in, the, the cacao the, the, and the goji berries, how do you source those and make sure you get the right yeah. products there? Yeah, so we actually get, um, we, we actually do like extensive research through our suppliers. Um, Eric, Eric Goldman, my co-founder, he does all of our operations. I'm our, I'm our, I'm our front man. Right. But uh, he's ruthless. That's he's great. ruthless. He, um, we actually have a, uh, different, different co-ops from around. So we, our cacao, for example, is from the Dominican Republic currently. And uh, we're uh, trying to single source it from the same farm from our uh, coffee, which is cool. So we, we were talking off air a little bit for our listeners and our viewers. And for our listeners and viewers out yeah. there, we're so excited. We got Ryan Schuler yeah. with us. He's the co-founder. He's the people enthusiast <laughs> and um, of Java Zen. And you can find them at drinkjavazen.com, drinkjavazen.com. Where can our listeners and our viewers buy your great coffee products right now if they don't live in the D.C. area? How can, how can they go online and find your products? I will get it to you in two days. Amazon Prime. <laughs> Amazon Prime. They are a godsend. That's um, awesome. But if you are in the area, we're sold in Mom's Organic Market, uh, Growl's Market, Yes Organic Market, Roots, Dawson's. So, um, and we're in 20 stores in Denver. That's in Denver. Yeah, I actually, I took a red eye home on Wednesday to be here to set up. I got in at 9 a.m. No. Thursday. Took an hour of sleep, came here to be here at the Green Festival. Life of an entrepreneur. I actually left early to go to a dinner with uh, with David Wolf in Baltimore last night. So, so talk about Denver. How did you get break into the Denver market? So, <laughs> imagine this: we had just sold our first store, Mom's Organic Market, last August, and we're like, "Hey, we need to get bigger." So, we got a pop up booth, a three hour booth at the at the Natural Products Expo East in Baltimore. Okay. The biggest one of the big trade shows for natural foods, and we met the director of purchasing for uh, Natural Grocers out in, uh, they're, they're headquartered out of Denver, so uh, we're stocked now in about 15 to 20 of their stores, and we're trying to share this as much as possible. This is I mean, great. This yeah, is great news. We're having some fun. So, talk a little bit about, co coffee seems to be a very busy segment. Yes. How do you compete and set yourself apart and continue to grow in that very busy but growing segment? Absolutely. So, as you know, there's a ton of coffee companies. Sure. I mean, you see a new one every week. Yep. But you know what they all are? They're all just different beans. They're all just roasted a little bit differently. Some are from different countries, and that's ah. great, different elevations. But they're all, they're all just different. They're not really better. We actually took coffee and made it a better experience, healthier. We want to provide health and inspire health to the coffee world. I so when I, when I drink Java Zen in the morning, it, one, tastes great, but two, it sets an intention. It sets an intention to have a healthy day and be cognizant of what you're putting into your body. Who came up with the tagline, drink up, feel good? I love that. <laughs> we, we just play with different ones. That's great, uh, though. Yeah, it was actually one of our designers. Drink up, feel good. Um, what's, the, what's the vision? What are you and your partner's vision of growing this brand? So we want everyone to be drinking Java Zen to be aware of health. We want to inspire health, and coffee, and Java Zen specifically, is one of the easiest ways to do so. I mean, we're going to do our mission. The only way we're not going to complete our mission, it's never going to be complete, is if we stop. And we're never going to stop. How is, how much further can you grow the line of products that you have? So the line, hopefully, will just take over all the coffee shelves. But um, we're uh, we're going to be expanding organically, waiting, waiting, waiting to see which SKUs are um, you know performing well, and then kind of adjusting to that. And uh, yeah, sustainability. It's one thing to be a young entrepreneur, which you get major props yeah. for your courage to be a young entrepreneur. Absolutely, been one all be, my life. But to, but to be to be a sustainability entrepreneur. Yeah. How do you take sustainability and weave it into your entrepreneurship? So it's been in our mission statement, really. From day one. From day one. I mean, like, we're going to care about our people. We're going to care about our farmers. And we're going to care about, like, how we do what we do. So, like, for example, these are compostable cups. Right. Um, it's really funny. At, um, at all these events, you know, there's always these three bins. And I give these people cups, and I always see them throw them. Like, they have no idea where to put them. They needed to have, like, sing single stream recycling. It's really funny. 
<laughs> so if I met you on an elevator today, what is your pitch to me, your mission pitch on the elevator? If I said, hey, Ryan, you seem like a nice young guy. What do you do for a living? What's, what do you do for a living? Hey, so my name's Ryan. Uh, I run this crazy company called Java Zen. Uh, we mix coffee, tea, and superfoods. Started in my dorm room. Now I'm sharing it with the world with 50 stores. Uh, we care about our people, and we want to inspire health in the, in the coffee industry. I love it. And, you know, why is your generation, especially all your great colleagues from University of Maryland, why are you guys all excited to start businesses, but start businesses not only you can make a great living from, and that's the American way, but also that are, is so, you know, agents for change. Make a difference. Make a difference, huge, huge social mission. So I really think one of the major aspects to that is our access to information. It's by far like 10, 100x greater than many generations in our past. Yeah. I mean, most people, I mean, I was just, just talking to my dad about this about the other day. Um, you know, uh, if you have, you know, more access to information, you're easier to just do something and just make it happen and fail hard, fail quick. It's true. And people aren't afraid to do anything. For example, at the University of Maryland and all over universities, they have these things called hackathons. They're like three-day events for like tech tech people. And it was actually where we launched our company at the at BitCamp. It's the University of Maryland's hackathon. Okay. So we went there. Really funny. I got to give you this picture. I want to hear it. So um, I put on, you know, those like dispenser backpacks? Yeah. We yeah, put yeah. Java Zen in it. No. I was walking around, getting people cuffed, and just putting it in. That was the official launch of our company last year. I and love when it. We had two, when we had two, 300 people tell us, wow, this is great, we're like, all right, we're doing it full time. We're in. We're all in. And uh, yeah. Social media. How do you use social media to build a, a great brand? So social media is very important. Like I said, we're in the information age. So yeah. we have... Uh, we are full-time full on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, we come out with videos. Like with, with social media, it's really important to create unique content. So, for example, um, we just put out a video on how to make a cold brew. So if you check out our YouTube, like Google, Google Java Zen, yeah. you'll see us in our kitchen, in our house, like teaching you on, on camera how no, to make. How that's to, how great. To, so if you have a French press, right, just throw some grinds yeah. and fill it up with water. Let it sit overnight. And then pour it over ice. That's cold brew. Who's curating your social media section all the time? Who's, you know, making sure that there's fresh content all Absolutely. the time? Absolutely. And that is, uh, that's one of our, uh, that's our social media intern, uh, Yoni Raisin. That's awesome. He also does a lot of our creative work. Uh, yeah, he's really great. University of Maryland? Yeah, all Maryland. You guys are all Maryland. That's, yeah. That's great. Um, what advice, you know, there's a lot of young people in your age range or younger uh -huh. that want to be the next Ryan Schuler. Yeah. That want to create the next Java Zen in a different vertical. Absolutely. What advice now? You're doing it already a year. You've had some highs and you've had some lows. What advice can you give backwards now to some of the next young people coming up? Absolutely. For, for them to, to get to get going and get get make the world a better place. All right. So just start now. Like honestly, uh, just to pre uh, to say what I said before. Yeah. Fail hard and fail fast. I love that. I mean, that's what we've always been taught. But more importantly, just you have to go out and do something. Like I've been in all these entrepreneurship classes. And they all teach you a lot of great theories and you know things and how it happens. But if you don't go out and meet people and just if you don't give it everything you have, it's not going to give you. It's not. It's not going to yield that same in return. That's Why right. would it? Right. Right. Why right, would it? Right. 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 So I mean, going out. I mean, our, our packaging, for example, we went out and got it. We, we actually crowdsourced our first bag off 99designs.com. It was like 500 bucks, and we got to get all these designs, and we just made it happen. We would go out and give it out to people. Just getting customer feedback. I mean, for example, if you want to make a widget. You know how many 3D printers there are out there? The University of Maryland has 40 3D printers in our startup shell that Whoa. has access to the whole campus. Holy I mean, man. you can do whatever you want. I know I know it sounds really hard to embody. Right. But like nothing to it, fear. Yeah, nothing to fear. Especially that's that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. I just graduated college. I don't have anything to lose. That's right. You know what? You're and right. The, the experience By the way, you're right. The experience that I get from this would be People don't get to do this till they're like 30 or 40, and then they're like, "Okay, now that I've made a little bit of money, let's go try and do something." How did feel? How did it feel when you first got into your first store? It was great. It was great. When I talk to you a year from now and have you back on Green is Good, how many stores are you going to be in? Over a thousand. Over a thousand. That's what, what is, I want. That's our what goal. Is, what does Dad say about it, all this success? It's funny. People they, they they thought I was crazy until about six weeks ago when I started, you know, winning this and you know getting more stores and you know hearing back from corporate accounts and going to LA and going to Denver, like, I don't know, now they're starting to see my dad's passion. E dad's excited. Yeah, dad and mom. Dad and mom. <laughs> no, they're your inspiration, right? They are, they, they really are. That's so they, nice. They've taught me to be what I am, and it's funny, my mom, she always says, um, you know, you know whenever I talk to people, like, after they've talked to you, they're like, 
how did you do that? He seems like the very upstanding guy. I'm like, I'm just trying to make everyone proud and just have a good time for myself. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I'm so happy for you, Ryan. We're so thrilled that you came on Green is Good today. Absolutely. For our listeners and our viewers out there, to find Ryan Schuler and his great company, Java Zen, go to www.drinkjavazen.com. I've been drinking it today, and it is a great product. Support them. <laughs> this is great stuff. Ryan Schuler, Cheers. to you and your partners, thank you for making the world a better place. You guys are truly living proof that green is good. Green is good.